justice and mercy, law and humanism, they go hand in hand in a country often called the last dictatorship in Europe. So 30 people have been pardoned? The decree is signed? Yes, these are those who in 2020 were involved to varying degrees in the attempt to destroy Belarus. But yes, these are those who repented and now need help. 14 women and 16 men, pensioners and those suffering from severe incurable diseases. Now they can hug their loved ones, play with their grandchildren at home. This is a humane approach. The act of humanism was announced by the head of state on the eve of Independence Day. We are after all human and we must act humanely. Don't be surprised if very seriously ill people as they write ours are released. Those who didn't manage to escape are in not so distant places who broke and crushed the country in 2020. But they are indeed seriously ill. We approach and treat everyone humanely. They admitted their guilt, sincerely repented, and committed to leading a law-abiding life. These are the main conditions for their release. Neither pressure, nor sanctions, nor threats of closed borders have ever influenced and will never influence domestic decisions. Otherwise, it would be bargaining or human trafficking, if you will, with people and their destinies, humanely, with understanding, but within the law, not anarchy. Let me remind you, this year, there were two more high-profile humanitarian missions from our country. This includes the exchange of Ukrainian saboteurs for severely wounded Russian soldiers, a terrorist who tried to blow up an A-50 in Matrilishchi for a priest. Rico Krieger, also a terrorist, was sentenced to death but was pardoned by the president's decision and returned to his homeland in Germany. Notice, it's always about human destinies, not trading them. I never trade people. I am always ready to rush into the fray to protect a person. So there is no bargaining here, and there cannot be. I will not bargain, even if there is some benefit to it. 30 people from the list of so-called political prisoners are being released. The last four years, Warsaw and Vilnius gatherings were not without theatrical actions about suffering, imprisonment, and torture. What is the reaction to this loud news there among the fugitive extremists? Pans in the kitchen sizzle, but very quietly. The extremist business has been in a stupor, in shock for the last two days. How to react? What to do? And what will they say now? After all, it turns out that for four years, imposters have been traveling around Europe and America with full entourage, playing drama and collecting millions in foreign currency at performances about politics. And now the harsh regime they fight against cares for political prisoners and does much more than the one shaking hands with the Washington Shepherd. Blow after blow in this quasi-state between Vilnius and Warsaw barely managed to recover after the recent exchange of the German Krieger. There were many uncomfortable questions. What did the fighters do for the release of the supposedly political ones? The New York Times reports after Krieger's pardon, the imposters first wrote to Western diplomats, saying that those who fled with them then are somehow dissatisfied. And then the phenomenal monetization of people from the list of 1,400 political ones. So much so that even Westerners were shocked by the audacity. Quote from the New York Times. Insisting in their message to diplomats that the issue of political prisoners remains a priority, the office of a certain lady from Vilnius appealed to Western governments for money. However, this caused discontent in some circles that this lady's team, which already receives generous financial support from the West, is trying to use the prisoner's issue to extract more money. In other words, extremists need these people to be imprisoned as long as possible. And now there's panic. Obviously, they don't know what to do. In Belarus, those they profited from and whose overseas existence depended on are being released by pardon. Now let's talk about symbolism. 30 pardoned, those who contributed to the attempt to overthrow the government. The decree was signed on August 16th, August 16th, 2020. A day that can rightfully be called the date of the Belarusian people's voice. It was heard then through the chaos and street disorder and the red, white, red fever of the capital. A powerful rally took place in the square Belarusians, whose voices were truly wanted to be stolen, wanted to take away their majority right 
and right to choose, to take away and sell to those Western gentlemen who certainly do not need an independent Belarus. And the pardoned are also Belarusian citizens of our country who stumbled, yes, but have the right to repentance. Once again, justice and mercy, law and humanism, hand in hand in a dictatorship. And what actually in a democracy? In free, for example, Britain these days, quite real terms of up to six years in prison are given for calls to protest on social networks. Were any of those who stormed the Capitol in 2021 pardoned? No. And whether by any declaration of human rights, be it the Moscow Mechanism or the Helsinki Act, but this is just a word about human rights, humanism, and a humane approach. Ekaterina Sihomarova, Vitaly Saplitsa, on the main broadcast.